Time travel seems to make its way into every form of media nowadays. And what else can make time travel more exciting? Romance, of course. Nor in Nine Vars Commons is one of those series. The series was an ambitious one when it first debuted during a time when there was only fantastical Otome games available, and it still remains as one of the most creative ones on the market. However, as you all should probably know by now, it happens to have a lackluster anime adaption. Surprisingly enough, that's probably perfect, as the game, in my opinion, mind you, isn't that great in the first place. Now, I'm sure not a lot of people even know what this is, so let's dive a bit deeper, shall we? Nor Nine Vars Commons begins when elementary schooler Sorata Suzuhara hears a strange song during a field trip to a laboratory. And this kid is a smartass who happens to also be extremely smart for some reason, but no one really remembers him because this ain't about him. It's about all the hot boys. And science. Sorata is warped from the Heisei era and sent all the way back to the Taisho era, specifically the year 1919. He then bumps into a young girl and learns about a big-ass flying ship called the Norn, which is home to a group of three girls and eight boys who are dubbed the Gifted. Sorato wants to return home, of course, because like, wh what is he? 11? 10? 9? Wait, wait a minute. Let me check my nose here. Okay, so he's 12. He's 12 years old. Okay, 12. The show does 12, okay. Whatever, his age doesn't matter until the end anyway. But he ends up finding out some huge secret about space-time travel and a whole bunch of other stuff that doesn't really matter until we switch to the real main character so we can start the actual plot. That's sci-fi for you, long-winded as hell. Nora 9, otherwise known as Noru no Netto in Japanese, was originally a PSP Otome game developed and published by Idea Factory on May 30th, 2013. A PS Vita version debuted in Japan on December 11th, 2014. The game was then localized for North America a year later, renamed Nor 9 Vars Commons, and released on the PS Vita on November 3rd, 2015. The anime adaption began airing on January 7th, 2016 as part of the winter 2016 anime season. While the localization for the game is still one of the worst offenses in Otome game translation history, I mean, come on, what? A doge meme? What? What? What is that? why we can't have nice things. One of the major attractions of the game is how it doesn't just have one, but three heroines, all with unique personalities of their own, and how all of them are fully voiced in the game. Koharu is 17 years old, the token cinnamon roll of the series, and the first heroine you're introduced to in the story. You meet her in the prologue when Sorato arrives in the past and can't move. She then makes a bonfire to warm him up enough to apparently save him from pneumonia. Okay. She has amnesia, so she doesn't remember her own name, but her goal is to find the Norn airship. She has pyrokinesis, an extremely destructive ability that made those around her fear her, thus causing her to forget her own name. The love interests in her route are Kakira Yuiga, Senmi Ichinose, and Masamune Toya. Nanami Shiranui is the youngest heroine at 16 years old. She's the kudere of the group, who has the ability to erase anyone's memories, and she also happens to be a skilled kunoichi who hails from a long line of talented ninja. While she may look emotionless, she has the darkest past out of all the heroines, which causes her to avoid others and seclude herself. The love interests in her route are Akito Shukuri, Ron Muroboshi, and Heishi Otomaru. Lastly, the headstrong tsundere of the game is 18-year-old Mikoto Kura. She's an ojo summon with a sharp tongue who has the ability to create force fields and barriers to protect herself and others. Get it? The tsundere has the ability to erect barriers, but when the love interests break through that... Uh, you know what? Never mind. The love interests in her route are Sakuya Nijo, Natsuhiku Azuma, and Itsuki Kagami. As the gifted, each character in the group has a unique ability. Since I already talked about the main heroine's abilities, here's what the boys are capable of. Kakeru can manipulate greenery, Senri can manipulate water, Water. Masamune can look into a person's past by touching an item that belongs to them. Sakya can see the future, but unwillingly, as it comes and goes randomly in flashes. Itsuki can manipulate others' dreams. Akito can also manipulate water. No one knows what the hell Ron's ability is. And Heishi has telepathy, which is considered lackluster for some reason. I mean, I'd rather have telepathy than the ability to bitch slap someone with water. <laughs> What's so funny? Okay, maybe not. Along with the heroines, they're all a bunch of teenagers, plus one kid, who are made to gather on the Norn ship to head to some foreign, faraway land. If you've played the game, then the first thing you'll notice is how the anime changes the introduction to the series. In the game, Sorata is the first character you're introduced to. In the anime, however, Koharu takes that role, and Sorata doesn't even appear until the second episode. And it isn't until the third episode that it adapts the prologue of the game. The first episode sets up the romance between Koharu and Kakeru immediately. Wandering around searching for the elusive Norn ship, she slips on some snow and falls into his arms. After that, she ends up almost dying by falling into a lake, but he saves her with his greenery manipulation. In that same episode, when they begin picking peaches for some random ass reason, she climbs up the top of a tree to pick one. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> this is, it looks awful. <laughs> it looks awful how she falls off the roof. Anyway, this time she actually falls into the lake. Kakeru saves her again, of course, and her almost dying for the second time that day must have activated her frontal lobe because she suddenly blurts out her name. 
私の名前はコハルです。コハルはい。What's odd about this is how コハルのソラタの introduction is pretty much the only major change in the series. However, they probably cut ソラタの part in the anime because it doesn't add anything of importance other than introducing the player to the world. They also shorten the exposition drastically, which is actually a good thing because boy does it drag, which may make some things more confusing than they already are. To make things less confusing and get that explanation out of the way, I'm just going to condense it as much as I can. Spoilers are ahead, so if you want to play the game or watch the anime, skip this part or leave, because there's no real way to not explain anything without spoiling anything. It turns out that World War IV happened in 2060, which is apparently the year that the story takes place. Because humanity believes that they need to start the world anew, a scientist created an AI robot named Ion who runs the Norn from a small island somewhere in America, and that's their destination, I guess. Ion was created to reset the world whenever shit got too messed up, but in order to rebuild it anew, psychic ability uses were needed. That's where the Norn Nine come into play, as they were also created to hold their abilities so when the world is blown into bits, they can just fix it. Kakadu's greenery to remake nature, Nanami's memory manipulation to erase everyone's memories, Koharu's pyrokinesis to cleanse everything of fire, you get the drift. However, the World War IV reset failed because some crazy ass man wants to revive his dead wife that's supposedly inside of Koharu and apparently he loves guns and war and whatever, so he's getting in the way of the reset from happening. Trying to retain all of this information while playing through 9 routes is tough enough in the game, so it's even worse when replicated and condensed into 12 episodes, and one special. And one of the most complained about details about the series is how it suffers from too many character syndrome. Just like when I spoke about Amnesia, the characters suffer from lack of character development. Development. But compared to that, Norn Ninevar is common suffers way more when trying to break down each route. Now, the anime takes a slightly smart approach in giving every hero her own main guy and pushing every other guy into the background of supporting characters, but that still doesn't make it any better. Here's how they split things up. After the ship is attacked and her suspicions arise of there being a traitor on board, Kakadu tells the group that they should have a partner system. In the game, you can pick which hero you want to pick as well as which character route you want to begin. Of course, Kakadu automatically pairs up with Koharu because he's the route they're adapting in the anime. He also acts as one of the poster boys, so it's not that surprising. His character hasn't changed all That much between the anime and the game, and he receives the most character development amongst the other contenders in Kohara's route. Natsuhiko, aka Best Boy, wants to stop the reset and the crazed pedo antagonist from committing mass murder, so he's both a protagonist and an antagonist depending on the route. Because of his popularity and plot relevance, they adapt Natsuhiko's route in the anime, making Mikoto and him the official anime couple. This does seem a bit NTR ish because Mikoto pairs up with Saki in the anime and then falls in love with Natsuhiko after he kidnaps her and you know all that. Like they're wearing matching hair ties. And everything, and the childhood friend still doesn't win? Okay. Nanami pairs up with an unwilling Akito because if she paired up with anyone else, it would spoil everything way too early. He's the token male s i n d e r e of course, so he's in a hissy fit for most of their interactions until he eventually falls in love with her. They do know each other, however, so this pairing makes the most sense in both the game and the anime. The rest of the boys act as characters who don't really matter to the story once the routes are set in stone, but this also mimics the game. For example, one of the reasons the plot feels so disorganized is because each character's route feels somewhat randomized. One big event can happen in one character's route, but then that character isn't important to anything or anybody else. Take Heishi, for example. No one gives a damn about him in the anime or the game, despite him being a pretty nice guy. His telepathy is mostly used for comedic effect, and he doesn't add anything to the plot in anyone else's route or even his own. They tease the coupling of Mikoto and Saki at the beginning. Of the anime, but like what was said before, he's a poor sap subjected to NTR by a character who is both more important than him in every other route and more popular in polls. Thus, most of his scenes are him having a pity party and chasing after Mikoto. I mean, that's not much different from the actual game, but still. Even Norn is more important than those two because he's the actual traitor aboard the ship. His route is locked for a good measure of the game, and he doesn't really do anything as to not arouse suspicion. I mean, he's still creepy towards Nanami, which is part of his appeal, apparently, but he serves a purpose for the main plot of every single route. Itsuki is important because he has a scene in both the game and the anime where he manipulates the characters' dreams to send them into a world where they all act as storybook heroines in episode 5. That's. that's pretty much it.、Uh, His ability is cool, but they don't really do much with it or him. In the game, this gives the player a fan service CG of the boy of their choice. Masamune acts as a foil of sorts to Kakeru and a big brother figure to Koharu, so he's out of the running as soon as the anime begins, while Senri is only important in Koharu's route because he's a shut in who only opens up to others by the power of love. All in all, the anime adaption actually happens to be a pretty good adaption, but of a very messy game. Nor Nine Vars Commons has an over exposition and info dumping problem in both iterations, which makes comparing it very 
very nitpicky. The only major differences between the series is how the already rushed explanations are rushed even more, and how Sodoka doesn't really matter. I mean, he barely mattered in the game, so that's pretty on point, I guess. The problem this time around isn't the unfaithfulness or even changing too many things. It's just that no matter how they adapt it, it's still going to end up being confusing. You can say that's sci-fi being sci-fi and everything about it is confusing as hell, but Steins Gate exists, so save your breath. In an odd way, the Nord 9 Forest Commons anime adaption doesn't bring shame upon the game, but how much shame can you bring upon it when it's just not that good in the first place? Once again, this is all my opinion.